Hello, and welcome to How to Name It. If you are planning to do the NC500 road trip and would like to know all about the must-visit places, then you've come to the right place. Even if you aren't planning to do the road trip anytime soon, this vlog will tell you everything you will need to know. So, grab a snack, get comfortable, and enjoy the video. Hello, how's everyone? Welcome to my channel once again. Today, I'm an Inverness, standing in front of Inverness Castle in the Scottish Highlands. Over the next five days, we'll be doing the North Coast 500 mile road trip. We'll be traveling through stunning coastlines, beautiful beaches, castle ruins, logs, and many more breathtaking sceneries. Follow us on the trip and let's enjoy it together. NC 500 stands for North Coast 500. It is a circuit road trip around the northern coast of the UK. It starts in Inverness, which is the largest city and the cultural capital of the Scottish Highlands. The route can be completed either clockwise or anti-clockwise. The landscape along the entire route is very scenic, but the west coast is even more stunning. We chose to do the anti-clockwise route to save the best for last. So here I am in front of the Glen Morangi Distillery, one of the most popular whiskies in the world. Unfortunately, because of COVID, they are closed, so we just managed to take some photos from outside. Our next stop is Dunrobin Castle. So this is Dunrobin Castle behind me. It's an hour's drive from Inverness. So we have stopped here for lunch. So we're going to spend some time, walk around the gardens, have food and then head off to the next place. It's day one of our NC500 trip. It's lunchtime, so we are in Dunrobin Castle. The castle is just behind me. We found a little place for us to have a little picnic. So I'm just going to show you around. So everyone is having lunch here. Do you want to say hi? And then just look at the location here. It's stunning, it's stunning. Can't get any better. So here we are 
in a place called Valingo Steps. It's just a little cliff. Uh, it's a little cliff. All I could see is a little cove, uh, turquoise blue waters, and a step that goes from the car park. So let's go and see what's in there. So not sure if you can see it. It just uh, steep descent down in here. Oh, it's stunning. It is absolutely beautiful. Next stop is Castle Sinclair, Guinea Go. So we have just parked in the car park. It's quite windy in here. So the car park is here. So then it's going to be a good 10-15 minutes walk in that way towards the coast. So I'm going to do the walk now. Then I'll catch up once we reach the castle. So I walked for nearly 10 minutes and here we are next to the castle ruins. It's a bit chilly but not too bad. The sun is coming out. It's nice. I'm enjoying it.
the end of day 1 we are in chonok roads which is the northernmost point of the british isles so they got a little landmark the post that commemorates that It's day two of our North Coast 500 road trip. So we were staying in Thurso last night, and we are here now on Wolfburn Distillery, which is about 10 minutes drive. It sits right on the NC 500 towards our next destination. So we booked a tour here, and Jenny for us agreed to take us through the tour. So follow me, and we'll see what's in there. Jane's been working in this distillery ever since it was started in 2013. Here, she's explained to us about the history of Wolfern Distillery, the different type of whiskies they make, and the process of its manufacture. shown around about the fermentation process, how yeast is added to the barley, and this is a place. Can you see this? So that's where the first white whiskey is formed. So we were told it is 77% alcohol in that. That's quite high, and the legal limit for storage in Scotland is only 62%. So they have to dilute down to 62% before they can store it. Very interesting, isn't it? So we are going into the warehouse now. Oh, the smell of whiskies is here is very, very strong. We could smell it. So it is a massive warehouse, but what we were told is Wolfburn is a very small distillery, and the amount they make in a year is what big companies like Glen Fiddich and Glen Moranji making a week. The aroma of the whiskey, oh my goodness, it's amazing. So we'll finish the tour now, so it's time to taste some whiskey. So we are on our whiskey tasting session now. Because I'm driving now, I can't drink. So they have promised me to give a sample to take home. So whereas the rest of the team, they are enjoying their tasting. more remote into the 
the Scottish Highlands, the road gets very narrow, but there are loads of passing places. There is almost one every 100 meters, so there isn't much of traffic jam at all. And also the scenery gets spectacular and it's very, very distracting. So it's very hard to stay focused on the road, but you don't have a choice, you have to stay focused. So tonight, we are staying in a caravan just before Durness. So from this place, it's exactly five miles. It's on the other side of this lock, but still, I could see that. I could say that it's five miles away from here because it's so flat in here. I could see, see, see the caravan there. So I'm looking forward to it. So we have stopped just before Durness. The reason why we have stopped here is, can you see people queuing there? There is a very popular zip line called Golden Eagle zip line that just runs across the beach. The beach is called Canabean Beach. It's one of the very popular and most picturesque beach in this region. So I've seen this on many, many vlogs. So I'm very excited to do it by myself. So next destination is Smoo Cave. So apparently this is a little cave or a network of caves in between those cliffs there. So we're going to walk down and see what's in there.
Eco Mountain Cafe. Apparently, I've seen in some of the vlogs, they do the best hot chocolate in the region. So, I've just got one. And they taste pretty good. We then headed to Coco Mountain, where they sold the best hot chocolate. As an avid hot chocolate drinker myself, I was very excited to try it. I had mine with marshmallows, and although it wasn't the best hot chocolate I'd ever tasted, it was still pretty good. So that's end of day two. It's been a bit tiring day, but very, very enjoyable. And for the night, this is where we are staying. We are staying in this lovely caravan overlooking the lock. Wolfburn single mod scout shoes key. The one we bought from the distillery this morning. Because I was driving, I couldn't taste it. And this is my turn now. Cheers. Cheers to NC500. morning this is where we stayed last night it was nice and cozy had a good night's sleep woke up this morning had a shower and I'm ready for the day so this is the view you see as soon as you wake up from your bed it's stunning once I finish my tea I'm going to walk towards the lock, get a bit close to the water and just spend some time there. I just spent some time near the locks. It was absolutely calm, crystal clear waters. I can't put it in words. I'm enjoying it. Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. How are you? How are you today? Hello. Hello, hello. What's your name? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to scare you. Some days the trips were long and tiring. So every so often we jump out of the car and stretch our legs. So this bridge is called Kailasku Bridge. This is a place where human technological marvel meets nature at its very best. Five miles from Kailasku Bridge, we parked in a little roadside car park. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a falls called Lochna Game Beach, something like that. Apparently it's a it's a falls that falls from a lock above. So we're going to have a look at the falls first, and then we'll we'll go drive through, go on top of the lock, and have a look of the falls from there as well. The path is a little bit rugged. This might be a bit slippery on rainy days. It's not too bad today. We went to see a beautiful waterfall. However, in order to get there, we had to walk 15 minutes over a small path on the side of a hill made from stones and pebbles. But it was definitely worth every moment of it. So this place is only 10 minutes walk from the car park and it's worth it. It is worth it. So above this falls is Lake Na Gimlich, Gilmich or Gailmich. So when it overflows, it falls into the falls here. So what we're going to do is after this, we're going to go back to the car park, drive around, go up the lake and have a look from there. This is something we do regularly. Every lunchtime, we'd set up shop wherever there was some open space. We'd fuel up for the rest of the day and then be on our way. After the picnic, we headed to a pottery museum. They had crafted beautiful furniture out of broken pottery pieces. Akmelvik Beach was one of the most scenic beaches that we'd ever been to. It was a smaller beach, but the water was beautifully blue and the weather was wonderfully warm. We all played cricket there and it was a really nice chance to sit and rest up. The only disadvantage I would say was that the roads to access the beach were country lanes with lack of many laybys. This meant that if you came head to head with another car, one of the cars had to reverse back quite a bit, which became increasingly difficult when there were several cars behind. On the way to Ullapool, we have just parked on Leibai and we spotted this castle. This is called as Ardwick Castle. There's not much left here apart from a bit of ruins. As always, the scenery is stunning. So we thought we'll stop here for a quick wander. So we have taken some photos. So now it's time to head back to Ullapool. the geology of the region to life as the path climbs past the exposed rocks and up onto the top of Knock-on Crag. There is a multi-layered rock displayed which has some rocks dating back as far as a thousand million years old. If you're interested in geology this is a must-visit site.
day four of our North Coast 500 road trip. Today, I'm in a village called Ulapul. So on day three night, which was last night, we stayed here. There are loads of hotels around, restaurants, and there's also a ferry terminal. So you can take a ferry from here to nearby islands like Isle of Sky and other places. So if you're interested in those kind of activities, then you can spend a day or so in, in, in Ulapul itself. So we're going to spend some time around and then we're going to head off to our next destination, which is Kerala. Another place we are visiting today is a gorge. It's called as Kori Shalok Gorge. So it's just on the NC 500 road again. There's a little car park nearby. So there should be space for about 50 cars. So parking shouldn't be a big issue. So the pay and display car park isn't working anymore. So it's more of a voluntary donation to this place. So five minutes into the walk, you reach this bridge. Okay. Thank you. I thought it's a suspension bridge and you're waiting in the queue. <laughs> oh my goodness. The view is stunning. This is the view to the right of me. I'm standing right on the bridge now. This is the left side of the gorge. Looks a little bit scary from here. And there is a little viewpoint there distance the five minutes walk from the bridge takes you to this viewpoint Midget, sir. You got, you got to use that at some point, isn't it? You bought it. Yeah. What Gita? Yeah. So here I am at the viewpoint in Kaurishala Gorge looking at the waterfalls there.
So we are still in Kaurishala Gorge. So if you're wondering what I'm wearing, these are called midget nets. Midgets are small insects or flies that's all over Scottish Highlands. So particularly when it gets a bit damp, they cause havoc. They don't actually bite you, but they, they just crawl around your face. Sometimes they cause itchiness. So we are very well prepared. We came with insect repellents and we bought these midget, midget nets. So that's what I'm wearing. It's a little circular walk. It took us just over 45 minutes to finish it. It's not difficult at all. Apart from a bit of midget attack, it should be fine. Now we are heading off to another place called Ardasi Falls. So I'll see you there. So we have parked this little village called Ardasi on the way to Gairlock. There is a tiny car park and apparently there is a falls trail that starts from here that will take you to Ardasi Falls. So to reach Ardasi Falls we were told that you got to climb up a hill it takes about half an hour of uphill climb so we are not sure whether we'll be doing it today because kids are a bit exhausted so they are all staying in the car we'll see so this is Ardasi Falls it's just on the roadside but when I drove past this road earlier I saw another falls right at the top so I think it's just a cascade that, that falls down so maybe to reach the falls we might have to climb up the hill and go up there but this on its own is good enough Here we are once again we have stopped on a roadside beach stunning locations like this are hallmarks of nc500 wherever you turn you see beaches like this it's absolutely breathtaking it is our gang having fun in the beach it's nice and warm 20 degrees i wasn't expecting this kind of temperature So we are having a little bit of philosophical talk about life and purpose of life whereas the other gang they are having great fun there. In Gairlock, there is a cute little restaurant called The Old Inn, where we had our dinner one night. They served a lot of seafood, which was great because we loved seafood. Here, you can see Dad explaining how to open a lobster properly. 
We went to a seafood restaurant and we've been taught how to eat a lobster. So we got a lobster here, which is already pre-cooked. So we're going to turn it upside down and open them up. And a little twisting motion like that. So it takes the head off. So there's nothing there. So the, all the goodie bits, the meat, are in here. So what I'm going to do is make a mess just something out and just scoop the meat. Oh, it's so sweet. Very nice. today so we parked in Torridon estate on our way to Apple Cross so it's a nice day again the sun's coming out it was a bit overcast this morning and we spotted a reindeer so I've never seen a reindeer that close that close on a wild it is a good experience You have become a celebrity, my friend. Everyone wants to take a photo with you. On the way to Apple Cross, we stopped in this little restaurant in Torridon. We had some very nice Victoria sponge and a black coffee. So here we are. Here we are about to start the most iconic route in North Coast 500. It's called as Bilak Naba or passing of the cattle route. So this is the route that goes from Tona Press to Apple Cross. So if you look at the board, it tells you exactly what the problem with this route is or why this route is so special it says this road rises to a height of 2053 meters with gradients of one in five and half in bends so this is not recommended for new drivers or big vehicles so there is an alternate route but we are going to take this route take it nice and slow and we'll stop now and then halfway through if there is a viewpoint and i'll keep you in the loop. So we have passed halfway through in Bilak Naba. It's quite stunning. It's unbelievably stunning. It's very windy in here. I could see loads of cyclists going past. To be honest, the roads is not too bad. It's all right. There are loads of hairpin bends, but there's plenty of lay-by passes. So if you time your drive, you can you can do it very very easily.
one of our party members had a birthday during the trip. And so we celebrated this by cutting a cake. I wanna wanna wish you a happy birthday. I wanna wanna help you celebrate. I wanna wanna wish you lots of presents. I wanna wanna help you eat your cake. Party, party in the island way You'll be jamming all night Till the light of day Your birthday, birthday is your day to shine Another year and you'll be looking fine So have a no worries, don't you hesitate So 12 miles of drive through the Bilak Naba Took us to Apple Cross So there's a little car park as you walk in on the right side. There are some fast foods around. I have to cross in fish and chip shop. We then headed into the little town of Apple Cross, where we had fish and chips for lunch. It was drizzling that evening, but that didn't stop us from having fun. Here, you can see us sat on the rocks, looking out into the sea. What were we looking at? Well, we found some dolphins. There were so many of them. And we spent a few hours sat there, watching the dolphins and eating our fish and chips. It's day five of our North Coast 500 road trip. We are nearly towards the end now. So here we are in front of Eileen Donan Castle, which is an hour's drive from Fort Williams. So we're going to have a look around and then we'll head off to our next day. Hello, today is the sixth day of our NC 500 road trip. We have completed 500 miles in five days and we finished our circle last night. This morning, we are getting ready to head our way back home. If you ask me how the last five days were, I would say it was absolutely magical, serene. It was like spending time in a nature retreat. Just enjoying nature all throughout, stunning coastlines, amazing places to visit, stunning castles, and so much of history and heritage attached to it. We thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please share and subscribe. I shall see you in another episode. Until then, take care, stay safe. Bye now.